Good evening. Welcome to Icons and Circles. This is Consul Aneta Blanc. Well, it's very apt to have as our guest tonight an icon in the diplomatic circle. And uh, well, we'll be celebrating the International Women's Day. And we have uh, at the forefront of the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Undersecretary for Policy, Ambassador Erlinda Basilio. Um, good evening. Thank you for joining us this, um, in the program. I know that you're very busy with all the concerns and issues going on today. Uh, thank you very much, Annette. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, of course, I share with you uh, the, the wish that uh, when we commemorate uh, um, uh, International Women's Day, uh, the women of this country in your region and your world will uh, have a happier and more peaceful uh, uh, world yeah, it's than last year. And especially for the future of our children and yes. our children's children. So I think the women are very active in trying to contribute in nation building and uh, maintaining peace and order also in, in the world. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have here this evening as our topic uh, the initiative of India uh, together with ASEAN in promoting uh, peace and prosperity. And uh, just to let our viewers know, I was uh, sent to India as part of a um, delegation of ASEAN journalists. And we were there uh, also to, to, dis, uh, to, to witness the Delhi Dialogue. It's the fifth uh, dialogue already that India has initiated. And there are a lot of concerns, uh, common concerns in the region that they are taking up. And that is why I invited uh, um, Yusek Basilio, and she was very kind enough to accept our, our uh, invitation. And um, she was a representative to the Delhi Dialogue. So she would like to share with us the different um, points that were taken up, different concerns that were taken up between um, India and the ASEAN region. Uh, um, well, I'm very glad that um, you were there to witness the fifth Delhi Dialogue. Uh, I attended uh, the, Del the fifth Delhi Dialogue in, uh, to, um, on behalf of Secretary Albert F. Del Rosario, who was unable to attend it. Uh, uh, the Philippines views the Delhi Dialogue as a, uh, as a very important forum which enables us to delve deeper into the ASEAN-India uh, partnership. Uh, in that dialogue, we were also able to identify uh, the, uh, the many areas of cooperation, th and there were so many areas of convergence between ASEAN and India. And uh, from there, uh, many of the interests of India and the ASEAN member governments were brought to the fore. Uh, it was also important that it was a track 1.5 dialogue, which means it involved not only government representatives, but uh, 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 academics were, were there, so uh, the, uh, the the discussion was very fruitful and uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, brilliant uh, ideas and new uh, new areas of cooperation were brought to the fore. And also with the business, the big the business, business delegations were yeah. there too. Mm -hmm. So it, I thought uh, it was a it was a very successful dialogue. Uh, um, th this was the f uh, fifth uh, dialogue that that uh, that that, that uh, took place uh, in Delhi. So we are very fortunate to to have been part of of, of that. Uh, both of us to have been part of that dialogue. Yes, ma'am. Um, if I understand right, you know there were a lot of um, very uh, how they say uh, important issues, and one of them, if I'm not mistaken is the freedom, the maritime uh, security, rules of en engagement, the maritime security, and that's very appropriate mm. for the present situation in uh, the ASEAN. Yeah, uh, well, uh, foremost um, um, uh, among the areas of common concern that uh, was brought to the fore in the Delhi Dialogue was uh, security cooperation. Uh, security is a sine qua non uh, or prerequisite for sustained growth, development, and prosperity. Uh, as you know, ASEAN and India's trade with the rest of the world are shipped 
to our contiguous waters. Hence, security cooperation, particularly maritime cooperation, to maintain the freedom of navigation and safety are foremost in the minds of government mm -hmm. and our peoples at large. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we, have, uh, we have discussed at length uh, the importance of maintaining peace and stability in the West Philippine Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, this issue has become salient uh, since last year. Uh, the, uh, the various fora uh, under the auspices of ASEAN and also uh, academic circles have discussed this mm -hmm. um, in its uh, various uh, dimensions. And we have come to the conclusion that indeed for to ensure continued peace and prosperity and progress, not only for uh, the region, mm -hmm. but also bilaterally uh, as countries uh, in the region, we have to ensure that uh, uh, the ways of peace must prevail mm -hmm. um, in all the things that we do. And, and that is also the main purpose of these dialogues, yes. no? to, to be able to iron out all these right. um, uh, wrinkles <laughs> in, the, in the region. But, but, but anyway, um, I understand that aside from this maritime security concern, um, you have tackled on, on several um, issues like the energy, the self-sustaining yeah. renewable energy, because, uh, well, it is affecting also, a it is a reason for the climate change, no? yes, so it's right, a big concern yeah. for the environment. Yes. Well, um, uh, there is an action plan, um, the so-called ASEAN India Partnership for Peace Progress mm -hmm. and Shared Prosperity. And this uh, action plan provides for 18 areas of cooperation. Mm -hmm. So in the political and security field, we talk about not only uh, developing poli close political relations, mm -hmm. we also deal with uh, uh, issues like terrorism and transnational crime. Mm -hmm. uh, in the economic field, we deal with trade and investment. Mm -hmm. uh, we deal about how best to bring about uh, closer integration um, among, ASE among ASEAN member governments and India. Um, we talk about its standards and conformance, finance, transport and, uh, transport and infrastructure, mm -hmm. energy, science and technology, pharmaceuticals and health, human resource development. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot. Um, That's a lot. So That's a full plate. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, that, uh, aside from that, we also deal with social, uh, social, cultural issues: tourism, culture, people-to-people -people contact, mm -hmm. media, entertainment, and sport. Mm -hmm. Hence, the importance of the of the print and broadcast media from the Philippines participating mm -hmm. in the Fifth Delhi Dialogue. Yes. Well, um, what also um, caught my interest was the. The concern on food security yes. and other non, uh, how do you call it, non-global, non, non, no, no, not, because we do have a global community right now, like non-traditional security challenges, yes. and that is food security, water management, and the pandemic. Yes. And uh, yes. Uh, so I yes, those are non-traditional issues, and they bec has bec they have become areas of cooperation. Mm -hmm. Uh, with India and uh, together okay. with the uh, 10 uh, ASEAN member countries. Uh, uh, at the Delhi Dialogue, we talk about how best to address uh, climate change mm -hmm. because it affects uh, water resource management, it affects food productivity, it also affects energy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the energy security. Mm -hmm. uh, you will recall when we played host also in, m in the Philippines uh, in 2000, uh, Six uh, two thousand seven, we the east the, the second East Asia summit mm -hmm. dealt with uh, energy security. Mm -hmm. So this is a continuing conversation in the region. Mm -hmm. We have looked at various areas of promoting energy security. Uh, so, uh, given the the populations um, in in this part of the world oh and yes. uh, and since uh, industrialization is on the rise. Uh, it is important that we ensure energy security, not only for families, but also for industry. Mm -hmm. Well, I was very much impressed. We were able to visit um, 
a nuclear power plant in the south of India, which was in Madras, no? Mm -hmm. And I was very much impressed by the way they were managing their uh, issues um, on energy. And, uh, well, because they know that coal really has a big negative impact on, mm -hmm. on climate change, I mean, on the environment. So um, they are constantly doing research on how best to address their, their energy supply. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, since they're also a big population, they're, they're mm -hmm. all nearing also the one billion. More than a billion. Well, I think that's by 2015, mm -hmm. yeah. But, but yes, um, uh, they are constantly improving on their uh, energy supply. Uh, then we also have this issue on the pandemics because, um, you know, the borders already are not... Um, they are porous. Yes, uh, they have all this, um, how do you say it, these concerns on the health that crosses borders, doesn't affect whether you're, you're developed, underdeveloped, or, you know, mm -hmm. that the population all over is very much affected with the movement of, uh, of people. Yeah, th th a healthy population uh, is good for uh, a progressive and a prosperous economy. So uh, ASEAN is a people-centered organization, so we have partnered with countries like India, Australia, mm -hmm. in addressing uh, pandemic, uh, pan uh, pandemics. Uh, um, Australia, for instance, is doing something with us on uh, malaria, mm -hmm. because many of, of uh, this the type of malaria that is now um, uh, prevalent in some parts of the region uh, is resistant to medicine. Mm -hmm. So they're yes. working on that to ensure that uh, people are properly inoculated, they're getting the right medicine, mm -hmm. and also proper nutrition to ensure that uh, um, they are able to uh, uh, withstand the rigors of uh, you know, da daily life the same time protect themselves from malaria mm -hmm. and hopefully we can eradicate this because uh, together no we together, can work on uh, that yeah. that's the only way to do it uh, mm -hmm. it has there has to be concerted action of course world health organization is doing its uh, job mm -hmm. but we really need to intensify cooperation insofar as uh, pandemics are concerned mm -hmm. it is one area of functional cooperation also in east asia summit where India plays a very active role. Mm -hmm. I see, because yes, um, it, I think India has really um, engaged um, itself in, in, the, in the region, in the area, mm -hmm. so it's um, important that um, we give also our best um, efforts. Mm -hmm. But um, we would like um, to welcome the, His Excellency, the Indian Ambassador, to join us also. Um, Shall we have that? Um, we'll have a short break and we'll be joined by the ambassador of India in a short time.